This week is all about heart health and this week is all about hearts. Well, not just because it's Valentine's Day soon, but also because we're talking about congenital heart defect awareness week. Now, Expressa has a personal story and a connection to this condition. And joining me this morning in our studio, we've got Erin Drayton. She's our script writer for the show. And then also Dr. Shannon Morris from the Fetal Assessment Center. Welcome to both of you. Morning. Morning. Now, Doctor, before we get to the facts and actually what it is about, Erin, I know your story and it's so personal. Your baby's beautiful. But Thank tell you. me about little Michael. Okay, so Michael is eight months old right now. Um, he was diagnosed with a rather large sounding word, an atrioventricular septal defect at there four weeks old. There he Michael. is. He's a little bendy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Likes to stretch. Um, and it was actually a little bit of a surprise for us because uh, the cardiologist who, who sort of diagnosed him said to us that his defect would actually have been really difficult to diagnose prenatally purely because of the way he was lying and also what his defect looks like. And then um, the other thing was, was that he was basically asymptomatic. So he didn't have any of the usual symptoms. He gained weight, he was feeding well, he had no difficulty breathing. So it was a surprise for us. Um, he then had a closed heart surgery called a pulmonary artery banding at eight weeks old. And he ended up spending 20 days in hospital due to a little complication. So he's been in and out of hospital. Is his heart broken? His heart is broken, but he's a very happy boy. And he's actually quite a healthy boy. We've had a, a really good journey since mm. then. And he's going to need um, another the open heart surgery to repair his defect in the near future. Erin just said a doctor, her journey has mm. only started. I mean, I've been to your clinic to also have that prenatal scanning. And I mean, when Erin talks about it, we, we realize that some things can't be picked up by the machines and the modern technology that we have at the moment. But give me an idea, how important is it to have a prenatal scan for heart disease? Yeah, very important because as you've heard now, the vast majority of babies with heart defects can be detected, up to 80% of them, but a uh, certain percentage can't be detected mm. antenatally and it's really important. Some of the heart defects can be severe and this would mean that the baby needs to be delivered in a hospital where there's uh, the right facilities, pediatric cardiologists, surgeons. So. By doing really good scan at 20 weeks, which is the best time to look, and we're very dependent on how the baby lies. Um, and remember, the baby is moving, so it can be very difficult mm. to see the heart really well. But if we do detect the heart defect, we can refer the patients to the cardiologist before the baby is born so that the parents are prepared for what may come. After and the I delivery. like what Doctor says, be prepared, you know, almost for what's coming. But there's a lot of stuff that you can't be prepared for, Erin. And I'm I'm thinking of your story. I mean, if you if you can't detect the, the, the problem prenatally, it, like in Michael's case, is there something that the parents can do if the child is checked when the child is born? How do you check for, for CHD? Yes, there's actually a fantastic story. Uh, a woman by the name of Andrea Slater, who is South African, um, sadly lost her son to CHD when he was four months old. And she started an organization called the Hudson Initiative. Mm. And what they're all about is actually promoting sort of the parents' empowerment in the situation. Right. One of their biggest things is to encourage parents to ask for what's called a pulse oximetry test. And basically what they do is they measure the oxygen level of your blood immediately after he or she is born. born okay. You can ask for this and a lot of moms don't know that you know right after you've given birth if you want to make absolutely certain ask your physician can we please do a pulse ox test on my baby mm. it's really like not going to be a very big thing they just bring in a machine they put it on the baby's hand and they check and it's actually so critical in picking up a heart mm. defect if one exists. So doctor that's not I mean it, it doesn't your baby's born and they do the five checks and all the other stuff that's not one of it. So you have to ask for it, basically. Yes, you okay. probably have to ask well, for it. Well, it just yeah. shows. Well, we're becoming knowledgeable on the show. Are there any advancements being made? I mean, it's already a miracle that you can check your fetus mm. before, you know, it's a baby, before it's being born, to check if everything's all right. At your fetal clinic, what, what advancements are they making? Are the machines becoming better? Yeah, um, the machines are becoming better, but unfortunately, in South Africa, there's no prenatal treatment for babies with congenital birth defects. So all the advancements that are being made are really in teaching and training, mm. doctors and sonographers who routinely perform screening tests on babies every day to detect findings that are suspicious and refer them to centers where the babies can be evaluated correctly and the correct diagnosis can be made before the birth of the baby. Okay, well Erin, you're a mom and you've had a journey and you, you just said that your journey has only started. Going forward, I mean, what would you say to motivate other moms, even though, you know, Michael has to go back and have more surgery? I'd say to other moms, you know, 
educate yourself. Find out, you know, more that all that there is to know about this. You can always ask your gynecologist, your your nurses, um, even your GP, if you want to know more. And then, if you do get a diagnosis, it's really not the end of the world. A lot, like eighty percent of these cases, can be treated, um, and quite a few of them, fifty percent of them, don't even require surgery. So there is hope. There's a lot that you can learn about CHD. And then, just for parents who are already in the situation, if you hear of a family with a child who has CHD, they always need support. So whether it's a WhatsApp message, whether it's an email, if you can help them with a meal, maybe contribute towards flights because it's very difficult. A lot of these parents need to fly into Cape Town or Joburg for surgeries Crazy or to see stuff. specialists. Please help them because they will value and appreciate every inch of support that they can well, get. Well, Erin, we give you all the support here on the show. Yes, Thanks for do. being part of our family and Michael's part of our family too. Dr. Shannon, see you at the hospital? Yes. Well, not anymore. My baby's almost coming, so she doesn't need any more scans at this stage. She just needs a miracle. Well, there's loads more happening on the show. If you think that you need assistance with CA, uh, and especially the Awareness Week, if you want to contribute, well, check out the Hearts Kids Facebook page or even go to ours and continue in the conversation. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show and we'll keep giving support. There's lots more happening on the show.